Why are they screaming? They're not screaming. They're celebrating. Hi, I'm Mike Seymour from fxguide.com for Wired. Independence Day Resurgence picks up the action 20 years on from the original Roland Emmerich blockbuster. And there are some epic shots and an epic alien. But to start with, in this film, our heroes need to overcome a 3,000 mile wide alien mothership. To help with such a vast undertaking, Roland Emmerich used a new NCAM system on set to allow him and the actors to see exactly what it was going to look like when the blue screen was replaced with the VFX. Well, that's like actually something which I really was looking forward to because I heard about it like kind of already six, seven years ago. And I used it a little bit in, um, in White House Down too. And then I kind of made a decision to go for a big, you know, like kind of crew there, you know, because it's a little bit crew in intensive. And, uh, and the interesting part about it is uh, if you know how to use it, it's like an incredible tool. Right. But a lot of directors have not the patience, you know, quite to use it because you have to kind of adjust it. You have to kind of uh, always measure every lens in and stuff. So there's a, a lot of uh, things, you know, uh, you have to kind of have patience for. But I always have the patience. And when uh, M, M camera is not working, I'm shooting real fast something else and, uh, and then go back to, to, to that. Well, much has changed. The effects are bigger. The ship is bigger and the alien is bigger when we discover that the hive is driven by one mother of an alien. She has arrived. Who is she? The film was supervised by Volker Engel, who has worked with Roland Emery on most of his projects. Now, while there are many companies that contribute, including Uncharted Territory and Scanline and many others, for the end alien bus sequence, it was in fact Weta Digital that Volker turned to, led by Joe Letteri and Matt Aitken. I think that was the first time you'd worked with Weta? Yep, first time, and I will work with them again. <laughs> And so, how did you how did you do that process? Well, it was first of all what we did. Um, we kind of shot a lot of stuff on the salt flats to, and and mainly as reference, so we knew exactly what like a bus could do. And we have a couple of these shots in, uh, but uh, not many because uh, Vera con convinced us it's much better to also create a bus uh, in CG. And then we had like just um, I, I did storyboards and then previous and then. And then you know we went from there, and uh, and then they they were but like Weta is is a very unique company because they make absolute creative you know suggestions. They said ah this shot we could do better when it would be like this, and then they show you how it could be, and then you say fantastic. You and know? you've always collaborated with your visual effects teams and your art direction teams. Yeah, yeah. Sure, but uh, it's it, it's sometimes you know certain companies who who just like only want to do what you give them, and right. others they you know they say well we could do this better in that way or better in this way. Well, if you thought that end sequence looked pretty real, in fact, almost all of it was CG. Weta came and replaced live action shots with fully CG shots at a higher kind of rate than they've done in almost any other film recently. One of the reasons for this is they have this really great new exterior lighting tool that lets them work out very accurately what's happening in exterior shots, uh, contrast ratios and, and how the fill would actually work. This of course then feeds into their relatively new Manuka renderer. On this end sequence with the Queen, the bus and the attack on Area 51, Weta Digital did over 230 shots alone. Well, don't forget to subscribe for more behind the scenes action. I'm Mike Seymour for Wired.